This is the Bread Pilled Witch, and this video by Bread Pilled Ministries is going to be a video on, what's the video going to be on again? Oh yeah, it's going to be a sermon, and I'm also going to mirror it on my main channel, so just in case anybody will be interested, and it's going to be a, a, an Easter sermon. Now... I could see a lot of things for Easter, but, you know, a lot of people in America, whether we believe in Christianity or not, we, our culture is still Christian. We still say things like Bible stuff, like House Divided Cannot Stand, and other religious stuff, all the time, in ex idioms and expressions, and metaphors, and we still live in, and most Americans are still a Christian identified. With that being said, whether really like Jesus actually existed or not is is not the point. The point is not the ex ex is not the exoteric. The point is the esoteric. You see, both religious fundamentalists and and materialist, anti-theistic, atheists have it wrong. The point of, and, I, and I'm going to start off with this premise, the point of those, what they have, what the points of those myths are not necessarily to just explain things, and although it mysticizes it. It also, it's also about ourselves, basically. And, for example, the resurrection of Christ, or reincarnation, it symbolizes we die, like we can die, every, we die every moment and get reborn, basically. Like, you die when you fall in love, and you get reborn. You know, the hence born again Christian. And, and so does, like, the chalice, which... Which is, you know, became a holy bath. All sorts of spiritual dishes have a chalice. But a chalice is basically a glorified myth uh, object cup that was useful because it was necessary to c carry people water into survival. So when, the, so when water containers were invented, it was a blessing. But over time, we, it became more and more uh, mysticized, as you will. And you gotta read, gotta read a uh, esoteric, uh, or not. If you, you can always read Gustav Jung. I'm forever young with a J. He's a psychoanalyst, is, and and the point of this is that Jesus is is that of course not the only person. Or Yeshua, preferably be called. It's not the only person, the person who legend about a person dying and getting reborn or a virgin. As there are other been gods and goddesses before him who have done the same thing. But Jesus is the archetype. But he's something, something special about this version of the archetype. You see, Jesus was a as was a communist anarchist. And he was a rebel. He was a revolutionary. He was also a mystic and a magician. He said, he did say, turn the other cheek. But, or at least allegedly, or, or thought to have said that. But, in those days in Rome, turn the other cheek does not mean what it means today. Turn the other cheek in Roman times, around Jesus' time, would have been a gesture of, I am your equal. Why are you treating like that? It's a stance of is asserting your equality, you know. But of course, not a lot of people know that. And of course, parts of the Bible, especially all the Paul shit and or in Revelations, are not actually because people bring up Roman chapter thirteen for to discredit Jesus and Christian anarchism. I'm not Christian, but I do. I am a follower of the Christ of. Christ. Of the Christ spirit or crystals. But the point is. I lost my train of thought. But the point is. It is also symbolic. Because it is of course appropriate from 
pagan holidays like Ostara. But the point of it is, because think about it this way, an old woman in the winter time, her friends, her family, her neighbors are, qu are quitting and they're dropping out and she stood to stand there and it takes faith. And not the not like the misunderstood atheist, that's like these versions of faith is believe or not evidence or whatever. I forgot how they determine the exact definition and that's embarrassing because I used to be one. But being faithful is persistent. It, it, it's something more to that meaning. But while sh other people who are equally talented and equally skillful or more have dropped up and give up on themselves, by the time spring comes, the old woman, the crone, hasn't given up. And she takes the blessing of not giving up to have faith in, to, in tomorrow. And, and that's the point. Easter brings in, is the day we celebrate life. Also star, but I mean, Jesus, whether he exists or not, beside the point, same thing with Lao Tzu. Jesus, Lao Tzu, and Buddha, the three noble sages, all have anarchistic tendencies. Jesus taught us about 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 the basics of morality. The and his esoteric teachings that can be interpreted as a way to reach analysis. One way. Buddha represents the the way, the how to transcend your your inner uh, illusionary self and to become you become your uniqueness in part. And Dao in Dao Te Ching, Lao Tzu talked about the way. Lao Tzu and Buddha, Lao Tzu left his prestigious government job and left the country. Buddha left his princehood. Ironically, like Kropotkin, and Jesus was supposedly or uh, thought to be uh, a descendant of one of, uh, one of the Judas, one of the kings of Judea before he, of course, you know, a lot of history happened, but alleged, well, thought of, but also he also thought to be a virgin, which is kind of contradictory, but in essence. I believe God is, is with us. You see, Yeshua represents not only the, not only the re rebirth, the rising from the dead, an archetype. He's also the liberatory aspect of that archetype. And those archetypes are how we, how God is, has, he, has, allowed us to connect with her. The Great Mother, the Star Goddess, you know, the Creatress, who is responsible for everything one way or another, or, or rather, or rather, gave birth to everything we know, gave us free will. And of course that sounds Christian, but let's hear me out. Now of course the, the People, a lot of people point, rightfully point out, well, hold on, we have free will in this prophecy. How is there free will? And here's the point. Process theology. You got to read up in your process theology. because, And it also explains the pro, 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 power problem of evil because she, the goddess, or Sophia, as I shall call her, gave us, she's both good, no, no she's both she is both eternal, yet, and yet, she's both temporary. T temp I forgot what I was going to say, but both eternal and temporal. She is both us and not us, within, without. 
in process theology, instead of having a, a Calvinist idea of, it is actually, it was started by Whitefield, the philosophy, but it became a theology. But it was the exact opposite of Calvinism because Calvinism basically puts us, the world, in the groove. How a lot of, even a lot of earlier Christian philosophers, imagine as like a record player and God plays it. And he, he, tells, pe he tells people what's going to happen, but, he's, but because he's outside, he is perfectly good. The process theologians would tell you, God is not, we're not in a record. It's more of a jazz ensemble. We are co-creative. And, and in other words, we co-create with her. She is us. We are her, part of her. And we are some of us. Some of hers. And another topic, you see, we are, we, us leftists and, or anti-authoritarian leftists and anarchists often get depressed about how we're losing. But, like the morning stars, where the name Lucifer come from, incidentally, Jesus was also called the morning star, interesting point, has, has symbolizes all the spring, and this is we're spring right now, justice, no matter how hard you try to crush it, liberty, freedom, it will, all, it will come back. The eternal spiral is continuing on and on. The world is fluid. And so in essence, to conclude, to basically say, all men, all, not just men, all sentient beings, all have this well ha have been blushed or been have born right born right to be free and if we're all equal under the eyes of the Sophia then none of us are, are qualified to govern another the state is just a sinful form of idolatry and in the spirit of dynomia I will conclude with basically, well, I was going to end this, but basically, let me ask some more. And for even Richard Wolff has, and I say we're in springtime, and let me explain. Even Richard Wolff released, there was an article about him, how Richard Wolff, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, even during the height of the arrogance of capital during the end of history phase, People thought neoliberal capitalism would be forever, but it turns out it was sowing the seeds of, his, of dis, its own destruction, and the seeds of class struggle is with it, is with us, and it's been sparking up. Life, the life of spirit, has sprouted up among the souls, the terrible snows of capital, and soon it will be displaced. And destroyed. And I got hope because people, there's the Brazil strike last, or this year or last year. There was, heck, even this year, West Virginia, a red state, I, if I'm not mistaken, had a teacher strike. It was the longest wildcat strike in human history. It broke the record. And, in that, and then, of course, the teacher of Oklahoma threatened a strike, and then they basically got what they want. Basically, class consciousness is black back. Christ consciousness is, is back. Christ consciousness. And anarchos is rising again. We live in a golden age. In the conclusion, we live in a golden age of liberty, of anarchism, of, of basically, no other time in history has it been, in, or at least in the West, has it been easier to gain Gnosis and achieve a mindset called anarchos, which is just no mean for um, being free from all this hierarchical conditioning of the archons. We have the chance 
to finally break the spell of the Archons. And unlike Gnostics, I think the Earth is sacred and nature, but we have the chance. We have the opportunity. Like spring is the opportunity to plant seeds. We are the op we are in the opportunity to plant the seeds of not just resistance, but the resistance will give fruit to the fruit of liberty, equality, and solidarity. And that's my conclusion. This is the bread-pilled anarchist, also called the vegan anarchist. It's not no gods, no masters. It's all gods, no masters. See ya.